right, this sort of thing keeps on happening to me where I had a clip from the 10th of ScoMo talking about the robo-debt. Just so happens on the 11th, he uh, seems to apologise for it. Let's check out that apology, shall we? I refer to the Prime Minister's illegal robo-debt scheme. Cancer-suffering grandfather Raymond had to sell his house and move into his shed to afford medical treatment. He says debt collectors ripped him to shreds over a $2,300 robo-debt while he was in hospital. Why won't the government apologise to Mr Murphy and thousands of other Australians who they hounded with their unlawful robo-debt scheme? The Prime Minister has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I'll, I'll ask the Minister for Government Services to add to the answer. Mr Speaker, the, the business of, of raising and, and recovering debts on behalf of taxpayers is, is a difficult job, and it deals with Australians in many very sensitive circumstances. And of course, I, I would deeply regret, deeply regret any hardship that has been caused to people in the conduct of that activity. The government has many difficult jobs that it has to do dealing with Australians in very sensitive circumstances, and that is true, particularly at this time. And it is our instruction that we would hope that all agents of the government, when pursuing the debt recovery option, that they would be sensitive to people's circumstances. And in relation to the particular gentleman that you referred to, um, that, that is a very distressing situation that you've raised. And I would apologise to any, um, any hurt or harm in, in the way that the government has, has dealt with that issue and to anyone else who's find themselves in those situations. But the issue, Mr Speaker, is the one of showing how the government can best do this. And where there are lessons to be learned here, they will be learned. Before you jump to forgiving him, I did say I was preparing a completely different video until he decided to do that, which really seemed kind of coerced by Bill, if you ask me. But anyways, I'm glad that that came out while I just happened to be planning out this next thing you're going to see, because I'm very glad that these two clips get to be put together now. Brilliant timing. Chef's kiss. Let's have a look at ScoMo with the current opposition leader, the day before his apology. Prime Minister, will the Prime Minister apologise to Australians targeted by the illegal robo-debt scheme? Can he confirm that this is a scheme that he both created and announced on the 28th of June 2016? The Prime Minister. The, the member for Barton. Prime Minister has the call. Mr Speaker, as the Leader of the Opposition would be aware, the matters that he referred to are still being pursued um, uh, through legal processes. But let me say this. The matter upon which the government has made a policy decision is on the basis that income averaging, a practice that was implemented by the Labor Party and government, Mr Speaker, embraced by the Labor Party as part of their debt recovery mechanisms. Members it was on my left. the issue of income averaging, Mr Speaker, income averaging that could not be relied on solely in order to raise debts in relation to social security matters. Now that is the matter, Mr Speaker. That is the actual matter. It is a policy and it is a principle Member for McMahon. that was embraced by the Labor Party, that has been followed by this government. And, Mr Speaker, where the circumstances have now presented that that income averaging is not something that could be relied upon solely, then the government has made it right. And that is what we should have done, and that is what we are doing, and that is, Mr Speaker, setting that matter aright. I would simply ask, Mr Speaker, given the Labor Party have raised this, do they now believe that they did the wrong thing when they used income averaging? A policy, Mr Speaker, that they used, Mr Speaker, that was their policy. We continued that policy. This has nothing to do, Mr Speaker, with the issues of, uh, of technology or how technology is used to do this, Mr Speaker. It is based on the principle of income averaging, something Labor embraced and now, for political purposes, once again, seeks to reject. 
24 hours different and he's singing a very different tune, isn't he? All right, and of course, I'm going to show you what I had prepared for after that clip because I feel like it's even more relevant after his quote-unquote apology. Headline from The Guardian from September 2019. Centrelink could launch more than 1 million new robo-debts in the next three years. Human Services Department forecasts up to 1.3 million robo-debts will be created to meet $2.1 billion savings target. Here's just a few paragraphs from that article. The Senate submission says that the department has now conducted 955,000 income reviews of which 81% led to debt being raised and that it would need to carry out 1.6 million over the next three years to meet the budget projections. The department has projected it will conduct 500,000 in 2019-20 increasing to 550,000 in the following two financial years. It has averaged about 230,000 or 4,500 a week since 2015. On current trends, the 1.6 million projected income reviews would result in about 1.3 million robo-debts being issued to past and current welfare recipients. And regardless, I feel like that is some important information people should know about the robo-debt scheme, which was illegal and they knew was illegal. Okay, and back to going at things that ScoMo said on the 10th. If you just look up when did robo-debt start, then if you check the Liberals' website, like their website with their plans on it, it says fraud crackdown. Since July 2016, taxpayers have saved $3.9 billion from a crackdown on welfare fraud and non compliance Compliance. Centrelink conducts a number of compliance activities that are designed to detect if people receive payments they shouldn't and help people avoid accumulating debt. And that's been updated in February 2020 this year. But yeah, I'm glad I fluked my way into the opportunity to put those two clips of Scott Morrison in the same video. So I for one do not believe his apology on anything ever to the Australian people and that really didn't even seem addressed to the Australian people, kind of just seemed like Bill Shorten really handballed him a slow one and then the media was there in the stands going, oh yep, yep, we'll take that, he caught it, woo. Because yeah, he doesn't care, he obviously doesn't care, doesn't care about a single person that was affected by this. And another big sign of that is if a journalist is to mention a person who's died after receiving a robo-debt, they will claim that they cannot prove that they had anything to do with each other instead of just acknowledging people's struggles and the fact that the government is making it worse. 